Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today we're going to continue with the Overdrive Initiative missions as the second phase dropped this afternoon. Priority targets is pretty straightforward, but there are a few quirks which might not be immediately obvious, particularly to newer players, so I still thought it was worth a quick guide. If this sounds good to you, then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, then let's get into it. A quick reminder that the Overdrive Initiative is a series of missions that are releasing weekly in the run-up to the major Xeno Threat Dynamic event, that looks set to run in tandem with Invictus launch week, so in May sometime. I'm personally really liking this approach, as through these build-up missions we're going to see a bit more narrative-driven gameplay coming to the game. So these big events like XT don't just pop up out of nowhere. Players who complete all of the Overdrive Initiative missions will qualify for a free upgrade from the new Hornet F7C Mark II, which we'll look at a bit later in this video, to a full military spec F7A Mark II. But it is worth noting that to apply this you will need to have bought the F7C for hard currency. If you're interested, I did pop up this Spectrum post in the feedback section, just commenting that while I've got no problem with ship sales, some form of in-game collectible reward would really round things out nicely. I'll stick a link to that down in the video description. Please don't worry as well if you haven't done phase 1 yet. The past phases appear to still be live even as new ones are added, so you can always hop back in and go back and complete that at any time. I've got a guide for that on the channel that you can take a look at if you need any help with it. But with that said, let's just take a quick look at phase 2, priority targets. The data that we stole in phase 1 is apparently locked behind some hefty encryption, so we need to track down Xeno Threat lieutenants to recover their crypto keys to unlock it. You can grab the mission in your contract manager's general tab, where it will pop up under priority. With a lot of people trying to do this right now, it took me a few goes to get one, so just be patient and it will pop up quite regularly. Phase 2 consists of three parts, each essentially a bounty mission that will direct you to a point within Stanton and have you take out the lieutenant's ship and their escorts, so I decided why not give the new Hornet Mark II a spin. I do have to say, this ship is very cool, and even with the stock loadout of two size 4 Rhino laser repeaters, it does pack quite a punch. I did experiment with adding the Super Hornet's turret to add another pair of size 2 guns, but in a laser repeater build I found that it reduced my magazine counts quite considerably. For a PvE scenario, I could see it being quite useful to maybe do that and add a couple of ballistic guns for a mixed loadout, when you just need that bit of extra DPS without sucking power away from your main laser weaponry. The first mission for me gave me a Valkyrie with two Mantises and a Sabre as an escort, so this is roughly equivalent to a HRT from the bounty chains I guess. But unlike in a normal bounty mission where you can focus the main target then just warp away, you will want to take the time to take out the escorts and clear the area, since you'll need to follow up with a little bit of EVA. Just like in bounty missions though, always keep moving. It's much harder to hit a stationary target, so don't present your enemies with one. And if you are a newer player or newer to this type of combat mission, then the other key piece of advice that I could give you is to try and maximise the amount of shots that you're hitting. This might sound really obvious, but it's just about not firing wildly from massive ranges or with shots which you aren't totally sure are going to hit. Take the time to line your crosshair up on the pip and only squeeze the trigger when you're sure you're going to hit the target. Once you've taken out the main target, the lieutenant, an icon will appear guiding you to the crypto key. For me each time I did find this was floating out in space, this might be intentional to stop it getting caught up in the jank of the internals or it could just be a bug in itself. So I pulled up to within 40 to 50 meters and then hopped out to grab it. Just interact and select store. Since there's no FPS element to this mission, you don't really need to have worry about weapons or armor, but you will definitely need to be wearing a helmet and something like a chest piece with internal storage will let you pop the key in your pocket, as opposed to having to carry it back to your ship and then store it there. 
Out of pure curiosity, I did take a look inside the wrecked Xeno ship. The bodies I found on board were wearing the same light armour that we saw in the first phase of the ODI. So if you are looking to stock up on this, you could always bring along a tractor beam and beam these guys back on board your ship if you've got internal space. However, we didn't see any of the really cool heavy sets. Do let me know down in the comments though if you've come across it. After you've grabbed the crypto key, you'll get a waypoint for dropping it off, so you'll need to QT across to this station. The drop off points do seem to be totally random, and they can take you to any of the Lagrange points or the jump point stations. Keep in mind that this can lead to some seriously long jumps, so while I was really happy to try out the Hornet, it could pay to bring something with bigger fuel tanks and room for a faster jump drive like the size 2XL1. In one of the missions we did, the drop off was a 70 million kilometre jump from Crusader to the Terra jump gate, then the very next mission took us all the way back to Crusader. So as a side note, we need some more side games to play on board ships, because 140 million kilometres of ice by got pretty tedious. You need to drop the crypto key off at the Kovalex box delivery point, so in stations which have one, like the jump points or low orbitals at planets, this will be found at the cargo deck. But at stations without one of those, like the Lagrange points, then they will be found at the Galleria in the admin booth. Open your inventory, right click on the key and select carry so it's in your hand, and then interact with this screen and click drop off. When the hatch opens, look into the opening and interact to select place. This will drop the key in and you'll complete the mission. After you've completed the first mission, you'll get access to the next stage. Now being totally realistic, the entire chain is completely soloable. Parts 1 and 2 are like I said, roughly equivalent to a HRT, or maybe an MRT, depending on the spread of ships that you get. And the third one seems to be consistently a hammerhead, making it roughly an ERT. Personally, if I was soloing, I'd probably go with something like Canaries Inferno, which will chew through heavier ships like this. But as with most things in SE, I'm a big believer that things are more fun with a group. So I got together with a bunch of folks from our org frontier, and we headed out in a pair of shiny Aegis Redeemers. If you would like some help with these missions, or if you're just looking for people to crew up with, then please do head on over to our Discord using the link down in the video description. There's no pressure to sign up to the org itself, our main driver is really just to get people a taste of multi-crew. One thing we did notice is that the chain can be a bit janky, as it was in the first phase of the overdrive initiative. When I completed the last of the three missions, for example, I got a pop-up saying I'd just done two out of three. A good tip out of phase one is to pay attention to the payouts to make sure you're completing the successive missions. So mission one will pay 8,500 AUEC, mission two will pay 13,000, and mission three will pay 19,500. As long as you get one of each of those, you're all good. For a bit of bonus cash if you want it, you can always take the Call to Arms mission from the Mercenary tab as well, just to bag an extra 500 credits for every bad guy you splash. But realistically, I think these missions are more about the overall experience than they are about getting rich. So there you have it, I hope that this short guide was useful, and if you were getting stuck at all, helped you out in the fight against Xeno Threat. I have to say, seeing this sort of chain in the game is really exciting, and it's making me look forward to my Fridays even more than normal, as I wait for the next instalment to pop up. You can also see how it's going to come together in the future, with people binging their way through the entire chain, and then potentially triggering the dynamic event. So if you enjoyed the vid, and think I earned it, then please consider dropping a like and hitting subscribe for more content. As these phases release each week, I'm going to keep popping these quick guides out, and in between I'm working on a few other video projects, so do stay tuned for more. But with all that said, I'd just like to say thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.